Hello everyone. We would like to welcome you to the Team 2 project presentation. This project involves John Deere's autonomous lawnmower, Tango. We were initially given two different tasks. I would now like to show you the two project statements for this project. Task 1 is to conceptualize, design, prototype, and test a modified charging station and mower interface, or add-on, that would allow mowers to switch out an almost dead battery for a fresh one. The almost dead battery is then to be charged and should be ready for the next switch out cycle. Task 2 is to improve the homing process. The challenge is to enable the mower to arrive at, and dock with, the charging station in an intelligent way. A good solution will work on non-trivial yards and avoid rutting damage. The team consists of 18 members. Three distance learning students, one Georgia Tech Lorraine and 14 on-campus students. We initially were divided up into two teams. Team Marge, maximizing autonomous range, was responsible for Task 1. Task 2 became Team Homer. There was also a leadership team which consisted of six members. The leadership team was responsible for making sure both teams stayed on track. Now we talk about the evolution of the problem statements for tasks 1 and 2. Here is the original problem statement for task 1. Upon review we decided that this task already presented a solution and swapping battery was not the essential problem. To fully open the design space we would need to reverse engineer the essential problem out of this over-defined task. We refocused on maximizing runtime instead of creating a battery swap system. Then we arrived at the modified statement for task 1. After some deliberation we again decided that this was still not the essential problem. Getting the job done was defined as being able to mow the yard in sufficient time as to not interfere with the next mow cycle. Our final essential problem statement and redefined task 1 was, to increase cut area per battery cycle. Now we look at task 2. The second task given to the team was based on the homing process of the mower, the method by which the mower returns from the yard to the base station to recharge when cutting is complete. We identified the different areas for a balanced solution, to return to the base station from any given location. To orient the mower to properly interact with the base station while homing and to eliminate the rutting damage caused by the mower. The working group created new statement targeting the core problem, separating the homing task into an arrive at and dock with the base station portions. The team believes the essential problem that needs to be solved is the mower's lack of knowledge of its physical location with respect to the charging station. After the redefinition of the task 1, the team reorganized the sub-teams into working groups that better fit the new tasks. These new sub-teams were formed based on the major tasks that the team had left to accomplish by the end of the project, including concept evaluation, simulation and modeling, mower demonstration and testing, report and presentation. The team implemented an open engineering design approach. For design perspective, in our early stages of design there are two goals. To increase design knowledge, and to increase design freedom. Increasing both of these allows the team to not only find a more optimized system, but it also saves time and energy by minimizing redesign or rework at the end of the design process. To increase design knowledge, the team identified the key drivers and variables that needed to be addressed and analyzed them for an improved system. The team also conducted a thorough concept exploration and looked at many different ideas, concepts, and possibilities that might be utilized. In increasing design freedom, the team found a wide range of satisfying solutions. With these solutions, robustness was considered so that the solution would still perform given changes in its environment. Now we will discuss mower modifications as an open engineering system by looking at the open engineering system design checklist. The team continuously evaluated each design step while pursuing a satisfying solution that was robust and adaptable. 
The group also considered how John Deere would remain competitive by devising a design that is not only low cost but allows for quick adaptability with changing requirements. The design is meant to evolve and serve as a model to next generation systems. The team wanted to incorporate and leverage mass collaboration tools and elements for the project. Mass collaboration is a form of collective action that occurs when large numbers of people work independently on a single project, often modular in its nature. Our group consisted of 18 students, including DL and on-campus students. The team split into sub-teams and utilized tools such as Google Hangout to work together and share thoughts, sketches and discussion. Functional diagrams allowed for modular design and task subdivision, which enabled the team to proceed in parallel tasks among modules. The team also used Prezi, Google Docs, and Tasks3 website to allow open sourcing for peers. The Paul and Beats systematic design methodology, outlined in engineering design, is designed to provide a framework for solving engineering design problems, regardless of the scope and complexity. The stages of the P&B method contain several steps designed to help design engineers progress from qualitative to quantitative elements. The P&B method was selected for this project because of its broad applicability to engineering design. While the initial tasks focused on two fairly different aspects of the Tango mower's performance and operation, both could be approached using the P&B. The use of the P&B method also provided uniform metrics for both tasks. The relative progress of one task to the other could be determined by the current stage of the P&B process. The first stage of P&B is product planning and task clarification. In order to do schedule the project for effectively manage the project, we applied Gantt chart to illustrate the project schedule. It essentially breaks down the work into a hierarchical decomposition based on the P&B method, including planning and task clarification, conceptual design, embodiment design, and detailed design. Besides, we also included project presentation and project report. Each stage. We further decomposed it into detailed phases and deliverables. Corresponding to these, we set up the timeline, including the starting time and finish time in terms of weeks with color coding. For example the red here shows what is late based on the schedule. One thing worth mentioning is that we include John Deere in the loop for feedback. We conduct market research in three aspects, including general marketing situation of mowers. We found that Tango E5 from John Deere is in the middle range cost and lower end of the suggested lawn size and the biggest competitor is lawn bots. In terms of task, we did market research on battery, and find that two ways of charging existing, including take battery out manually, and charging on the mower automatically. It usually needs longer time for changing than running. There are several methods are used for homing methods, including boundary wire, RFID, infrared sensors, ultrasonic, and sonar location and so on. Then, we did the physical tear down of the Tango E5, studied its mechanical, electrical, especially motor and user interface. The pictures here show the tear down. Besides, we also checked the specification of the mower. We found that navigation is random and spiral. Battery is automatic charging which needs 90 minutes, but mowing time is only 60 minutes. The output of product planning and task clarification is requirements list. First we generated requirements list for the project, such as OES and follow a systematic design method. Then specifically we generated requirements lists for the two tasks. Here shows the requirements list in task 1. They are categorized into different categories, and each team member has the chance to contribute during the generation process. Two leaders are responsible for the finalization process. We went through three rounds of refinement to finalize the requirements list. For example, one demand in the subcategory of installation is equipment should be installed by the dealer, or a determined user. Here shows the final requirements list for task 2. As an example, one wish in the subcategory of navigation is mower should always know its location in the yard. 
The second stage is conceptual design to begin the conceptual design phase, essential problems were created for both tasks. These essential problems are a direct result of the team's market analysis and requirements lists already presented. The task when essential problem was found to be, develop a system or add-on that would allow mowers to maximize and or improve the runtime to downtime ratio. The task 2 essential problem was found to be, the mower's lack of knowledge of its physical location with respect to the charging station. The function structure for task 1 displays all of the tasks necessary to achieve the essential problem. For task 1, the main task is to maintain power to the mower. To fulfill this main task, the team found the major subtasks to be obtain power, monitor power, and store power. Several possible concepts were developed using a group brainstorming method. These concepts constituted a diverse set of ideas, including concepts from using solar power to provide an additional power source to using a geothermal base station to save on operating costs. To refine these concepts, a HATS method was used to evaluate all possible viewpoints of each of the possible concepts. This HATS method led to a more refined and smaller list of concepts. To evaluate the task 1 concepts, a set of 11 high-level concepts were developed to satisfy the requirements. Of these 11 concepts, 4 were down-selected based upon input from the entire task team. From these 4 high-level concepts, 11 further low-level concepts were developed as concepts to accomplish each of the high-level concepts. Similarly, these 11 low-level concepts were further down-selected to create a list of three low-level concepts that all meet the essential problem previously posed for Task 1. Shown as the Task 1 High-Level Concept Evaluation Matrix. The resultant top four concepts of this process came out as increasing efficiency, adding batteries, wireless charging, and super or rapid charging. Shown here is the Task 1 Low-Level Concept Evaluation. Finally, it is shown that the decided low-level concepts to carry forward are increasing efficiency by optimizing the cutting path, adding additional permanent batteries, and adding multiple battery ports to ease battery swapping. The function structure for Task 2 displays all of the main tasks necessary to achieve the essential problem. In keeping with the task, the main function noted is to return the mower to the charging station in a smart way and dock the mower with the charging station successfully. Additionally, all of the major subtasks and input, which range from determining the mower's actual position to confirming a successful charge, are noted in the diagram. These subfunctions and inputs all involve individual data processing steps that must be accomplished to achieve the main function. Similar to Task 1, several possible concepts for Task 2 were developed using a group brainstorming method. These concepts ranged from navigation using a grid of RFID tags to using gravity and the slope of the yard to help the mower navigate. To refine these concepts, again a HATS method was used to evaluate all possible viewpoints of each of the possible concepts. This HATS method led to a more refined and smaller list of concepts that will be discussed later in this presentation. For Task 2, a slightly different concept evaluation approach was used. To evaluate the Task 2 concepts, an initial assessment was completed for all of the most feasible concepts following the HATS method evaluation. Following this initial assessment, the top solutions were evaluated using a technology impact matrix. With the input from the technology impact matrix, a set of full system concepts could then be created which were finally assessed and will be presented next. Following the technology impact matrix, these full system concepts including RFID tag locating options, acoustic beacon locating, and multiple loops of boundary wire were gathered to compile a set of concepts that could be implemented as a complete system to solve the essential problem previously posed. This table displays the final Task 2 concept evaluation, indicating that the team determined the concept of RFID tags coarsely placed around the yard perimeter to be the leading concept. To form a coherent complete system approach, the concepts for both Task 1 and Task 2 were compiled to form a complete system approach. In doing so, 
It was determined that homing is still a high priority, as was noted by John Deere in the initial project description. Mower positioning however was found to be of lower importance, especially if an improved mowing algorithm is found. An improved algorithm is expected to meet all of the project deliverables, without having to add the extra cost and complexity of a mower positioning system within a yard. Valuable insight was gained from presenting the Task 1 and 2 concepts to the John Deere representative. For Task 1, John Deere helped the team realize that creating a smarter mower is the real objective of the problem, and as a result the optimized cutting path is the ideal concept to investigate further. For Task 2, the team learned that current trials with wheel odometry are not helpful on the mower. Moreover, the team determined that, assuming the boundary wire were still be used, that some sort of obstacle detection is required. This insight will be valuable for embodiment design. Following the feedback from John Deere, the task teams determined that the best method to solve both tasks was to form a common approach where the actual operation of the mower was to be optimized. With this approach the concepts developed for task 2 became the dominant concepts to carry forward. Out of the concepts previously discussed, the team decided to carry forward with three main concepts being boundary wire with acoustic beacons, boundary wire with RFID tags at the perimeter, and boundary wire with RFID tags spread throughout the yard. The team first examined the merits of a boundary wire system that included acoustic beacons placed throughout the yard. On a pure technology view, this approach appeared to be the best option. The amount of information that could be conveyed by an acoustic beacon system was determined to be far superior to any other method. However, the team was not able to find any readily available components off the shelf, and what was available was determined to need a significant amount of investment to develop, and would end up being an expensive system. The team next looked at the option of having a boundary wire with RFID tags spread along the perimeter. This concept provided the cheapest of the three concepts, and a system that could easily be adapted to the current mower. Additionally, this system could be adapted to a large range of yard shapes and sizes. Some drawbacks to the system were that it required more tags than the acoustic system and thus more installation time, and also could not relay as much information as could be gained from the acoustic system. The boundary wire system with a coarse RFID grid has the same attributes as previously discussed, however for this concept with a grid spread across the yard the accuracy of the mower operation could further be improved. Clearly though with this concept, even further RFID tags are needed, and thus further installation time is needed during installation. After evaluating the three concepts, the team determined that the ideal concept to carry forward was a boundary wire system with RFID tags to determine position and heading. With this choice, both tags on the perimeter and in the middle of the yard could be leveraged to provide the best results. Additionally, during the analysis of these concepts the team found further concepts that could be taken as optional add-on depending on a given customer's request. These options include a ground covering to protect the yard from rutting, an ultrasonic object detection system to avoid objects in the yard, and mower wheel modifications to again avoid rutting. To begin to model the system with RFID tags, the team developed a 2D MATLAB code to model the operation of the mower and gain a quick feedback on how different tweaks to the mower algorithm affects performance. This model provided valuable input to select the optimal spacing and control of the mower system with RFID tags. To further analyze the response of a system with RFID tags, the team used a more refined 2D model to quantify the benefits that can be seen from the implementation of RFID and an improved algorithm. This modeling has shown a clear benefit of using a modified algorithm and RFID tags to give the mower a better idea of where it is in the yard and where it has already gone. At a first pass through the modeling, the random mowing path seemed to be the ideal solution to optimize mower cut time and operation. This however did not capture the amounts of times that the mower passed over a given spot. 
the redundancy serves to decrease mowing efficiency and over the entire yard decreases the effectiveness of the approach. This impact of redundancy will be explored further in the next slides. Finally, the true impact of redundancy is shown here. At very low percentages of lawn mode, all concepts seem to have very low redundancy. However as the percentage of lawn mode is increased, the redundancy in the random system quickly increases to a point where the overall cutting time of the yard increases substantially. This impact serves to show that an optimized cutting path clearly is beneficial to the system as a whole and can provide a tangible benefit to the mower system. The team began prototyping the concept selected, by learning about the mower as it was designed. This included the teardown that was mentioned earlier, fixing broken parts of the mower, and setting up a sample yard with boundary wires, to allow the mower to operate as it was designed. Once this was verified, the team began to use to Raspberry Pi included in the development kit, to implement the design changes. It was discovered that the code contained on the Pi was not sufficient to operate the mower, in its normal mowing and homing modes. Therefore, the team concluded that, it must show a different version of its design as a simple proof of concept. Code was written to open a serial port, so that the Raspberry Pi could read an RFID tag numbers over a USB connection. The ID values obtained by the RFID reader were compared to a table of values, by which simple commands could be executed on the mower based on which RFID tag the mower encountered. This made it possible for the mower to read a tag and get heading information in order to take a direct path to the charging station. We show the final design rather than detailed design based P and B method in this project. However, the RFID project concerning homing has no final design, because it is still in research and development phase. For path planning, we see that it takes the random method almost four times longer that the optimized method to cut 90% of the yard. Heat maps were created to show how many times the mower recuts the same portion of lawn. This was a great way to visualize how inefficient the random method mower actually is. The RFID and ideal methods show very minimal overlap and prove to be great time savers. The section that does show up as overlap reveals the additional steps necessary to avoid the static object according to their respective techniques. The individual red dots that appear are unavoidable resolution errors caused in the coding, and do not have real-world implications. For the future work, the RFID tags still need to be integrated along the boundary in the code. These will function similarly to the RFID tags around static objects. When the mower switches into homing mode, and runs into an RFID tag, it will collect heading information, and set off in that direction. Ideally, the mower will make a direct path home, but there will be some random errors. This method will, however, get the mower to the vicinity of the charging station, where a similar array of tags can correct the tango's heading. Then, the code needs to be adapted to respond to dynamic objects. When the tango mows around a yard, it needs to avoid a lawn chair that is there today, but not necessarily tomorrow. This is an important aspect, if path planning is to be pursued. Other future work for to be performed would mainly involve the detailed design phase of the P&B method. Physical modifications would need to be made to the mower, in order to place the RFID reader in a location, where it could effectively read tags, but not encounter interference. CAD models and finite elements analysis would need to be performed, in order to get detailed drawings and specifications. More testing would need to be done with a more powerful RFID reader, in order to obtain more consistent and accurate readings. Detailed plans would need to be drawn up, as to the placement of the RFID tags along the boundary wire, and the installation and programming procedures that would have to take place, during initial setup of the Tango system. The code that defines the mower's normal operation would have to be changed, in order to implement the new homing process. This is how the world works. The sun shines, the grass grows. 
tango begins to work at three. The other three. The charging station provides energy and the world turns. Rain falls, water falls, dump water. Tango owns the yard. This is the way it was. This is the way it is. And this is the way it will be.